That's Georgetown University student Nuran Hamdan waving the Palestinian flag during her graduation ceremony. She's about to diss the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. Let's watch how that goes down. Anthony Constantine. So she just walks right past Anthony Blinken, who probably gave a speech during their graduation ceremony, refuses to shake his hand and continues moving forward. She is not the only Georgetown student who was graduating and decided to take that opportunity to protest the US government's decision to continue sending military weaponry, arms over to Israel, despite what its government continues to do in its you know, aggression and actions against Palestinians. It is referred to as an apartheid state for good reason. And I have more details about what happened in the aftermath of this protest. But before we get to that, Jink, why don't you jump in? Yeah, so uh, I think this is called freedom of speech uh, and freedom of expression. And so I love that she exercised that right. Uh, is the American government um, fair to Palestinians? Don't be ridiculous, are we neutral? Are we objective? Don't be ridiculous. Uh, the Secretary of State uh, for the United States of America is massively one-sided against Israel and the endless occupation. This is the bare minimum that you can do and uh, and I'm glad that she did that. And a lot more should be done in terms of protests. Of course, everyone in power will see it completely uh, differently. In fact, they'll see it the opposite. There's a great outrage, they'll take great umbrage. How dare you not bow your heads to our preordained policy that is never debated in America and how we must be one sided and the Palestinians must never be free because of course they're largely Muslim and Muslims only know violence. They say in their infinite bigotry without realizing how deeply bigoted they are. There is no reason for the occupation at this point, it is unconscionable. And I like that we at least have some degree of protest here in America about it. Right, and I do see the I guess the culture or the reception to these stories coming out of you know the Gaza Strip, East Jerusalem, the West Bank, it's being treated differently, right? Before, I mean, it was either complete silence or just condemnation toward Palestinians for throwing rocks or what was referred to as incendiary devices, right? But again, it's an asymmetric situation when you consider the military capability on the Israeli government side versus what the Palestinians have, which again is very little to defend themselves. Now, as I mentioned, she wasn't the only one who took part in this protest. One individual on Twitter noted, I counted six Georgetown law grads carrying the Palestinian flag across the stage. We love to see it. And later, Nuran decided to share her perspective, talk about the motive for this protest, saying, Myself and my classmates in Arab studies honored the legacy of Shireen Abu Akleh during Anthony Blinken's commencement address. We demand an independent investigation and an end to American aid to Israel now. I relayed these demands to Blinken personally and refused to shake his hand. And and to her point about refusing to shake his hand and, and catching up with him after after the ceremony, apparently uh, he told her, I hear you, but do you? No, you don't. Do hear you her. hear her? I you mean, don't hear her at all. You hear the sign of a cash register, that's for sure. Okay, you're not supposed to say that. Lobbyists don't exist. The mainstream media will tell you there are no such things as lobbyists. And when they say, hey, they're doing it specifically for a foreign government, you're not to believe them. You're lying eyes. You're supposed to believe something else magical. So, no, and when I, and it's not particularly to Blinken. Lincoln works for Joe Biden and Democratic Party in general, which has taken millions upon millions upon millions of dollars from PACs in favor of Israel. And if you think that hasn't affected them, welcome to planet Earth. It's nice to have you here. I assume you're calling yourself a reporter because you're the only people left on the planet who don't realize that millions of dollars in bribes affect politicians. Also, it's worth noting in the aftermath of the shooting death of journalist, Al Jazeera journalist Akleh, who was mentioned in the tweet by Nuran. I should note that the Israeli government has decided to not conduct an investigation. Of which course not. They claimed, well, there's no evidence that the Israeli Defense Forces 
shot and killed her. It could have been the Palestinians. There's no evidence indicating it's the Palestinians. It doesn't even make sense for it to be Palestinians considering she's an Al Jazeera reporter um, who clearly had press written all over uh, her, her vest. And I, I don't remember if she had a hat, but it, she was labeled uh, with press. And you know who does investigations, Anna? People who are sure that they didn't do it. Right, exactly. You know who doesn't do investigations? People are pretty sure that they did do it. That's that's how it usually works. Oh, a major journalist, one of the most famous journalists in the region is killed. Bah, forget about it. The only reason you would do that is if you were the culprit. And going back to Blinken, because I do think it's important to talk about why there would be any ire directed toward him specifically. You know, prior to him getting con, uh, serving in Biden's administration, he was actually uh, the head of a think tank. He had founded a think tank that worked pretty closely with defense contractors. And anytime you question what the motivations are in regard to US foreign policy, you should follow the money, including some of the favors that are made uh, for lobbying defense contractors. Aside from that, last year, when uh, the Al Aqsa Mosque was raided, by the way, it was raided this year as well, but last year, when it was raided and that led to even more violence and even more civilian deaths. Anthony Blinken was asked specifically about the pressure toward the Biden administration to stop sending military aid to Israel and take a look at how he answered that question. President reiterated his strong support of for Israel on Friday, but he's coming under increased pressure from progressives. Bernie Sanders has introduced a resolution of disapproval over a new arms sale to Israel. Others like Rashida Tlaib and AOC say the US should not be rubber stamping arms sales to Israel when they use the weapons to abuse Palestinian rights. What's your response to that? Well, happily, George, one of the things I don't do in this job is I don't do politics. I focus on the policy, so I'll leave the politics to others. When it comes to arms sales, two things. First. The president's been equally clear. We are committed to giving Israel the means to defend itself, especially when it comes to these indiscriminate rocket attacks against civilians. So it's important to remember at the time, you need more context. Palestinians living in East Jerusalem were being forced out of their homes, which the international community, with the exception of the United States, referred to as a war crime, raiding the Al Aqsa Mosque, or I should say, a violation of international law. Let me be clear. So, not a war crime, a violation of international law. They also said that the Al Aqsa Mosque being raided as Palestinians were practicing their religion was also a violation. And the response to that, by Anthony Blinken was, the Israeli government has the right to defend itself. Yeah, oh, to, oh, I didn't know that, that's all breaking news. Okay, by the way, real quick question though. Think about this question for a second. Do the Palestinians have a right to defend themselves? According to the United States government, no, they don't. No, but that's literal. Yeah. They say Israel has infinite right to defend itself, which I agree with. They say Palestinians have no right to defend themselves which I do not agree with, and it's a barbaric and racist policy by the United States of America. So let me clarify the levels here. A, you wanna give an Iron Dome to Israel that protects its civilians, I'm perfectly happy with that, right? Now I say, okay, now let's give Iron Dome to the Palestinians. <laughs> the way to Washington, they're like, no, that would protect innocent Palestinian lives. Of course we wouldn't do that. No, you kill the Palestinians and you occupy them for 60 years because they only understand, they only understand violence. No, sounds like we only understand violence and we do it based on bigotry and racism and it is absolutely indisputable. Take any group and say they cannot be free. They must be occupied forever because of the nature of who they are. And that is racist by definition. Okay, so now just the layers of this real quick. Uh, when you're talking about APAC and some of the lobbyist groups, they are massively right wing. Uh, are they spending in Democratic primaries? Yes, of course, for conservative Democrats and corporate Democrats and against progressives, okay? Mm -hmm. And then uh, they, and ironically, the ads that they are running say, oh, the progressives aren't Democratic enough. You guys are funded mainly by Republican money. You give to Republicans and including people who are. It, it, in favor of the insurrection and some who are in favor of the replacement theory. That is an abomination. Yep. And so I have no interest in APAC and those lobbies, which are grotesquely right wing, okay? 
Now, on the other hand, ADL, for example, has done great work, okay? The Anti-Defamation League, they protect not just Jewish Americans, but they protected Muslim Americans under Trump, and they do a great job. But these days, they're also doing false equivalencies. And they're saying, "Oh well, you know, the right wing murders us in synagogues, and the left wing disagrees with us slightly on Israeli policy, so they're the same. No, no, not the same. In a time of rising and deep anti-Semitism, where they're blaming all of the world's, America's problems on the Jews, and that the Jews are trying to replace white Americans with immigrants. You cannot do false equivalencies. And that I don't say on behalf of the Palestinian people. I say that on behalf of Jewish Americans here, who desperately need your protection. But instead, you're too busy worrying about, oh my God, how long can we keep the Palestinians under our thumbs, right? Why don't you do the moral thing, the Jewish thing, go to a Passover? Have you ever heard the speeches at Passover? Why don't you actually do them? Why don't you actually do them and free the Palestinians and fight the anti-Semites here in America? Finally, the last layer of this is the Jewish voters themselves. They are actually fantastic and among the most progressive in the country. Do not make the mistake of thinking that these groups, especially the right wing lobbyist groups, represent all Jewish Americans. It is not remotely true. In fact, some of our best fighters on the left and on the progressive side are Jewish Americans who are brave and who stand up to these lobbyists. That is a super important distinction. We fight against bigotry, anti Semitism, and racism together. And you just saw it there at Georgetown. Great job, students. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.